Are you thinking about purchasing the Canon EOS 250D, also known as the Rebel SL3, or the Canon Rebel T5, also known as the 1200D, but you want to know if they're still a good idea to buy in 2023? In this review, we'll discuss whether these cameras are still good and whether you should buy either of them. First, I want to discuss which lenses these cameras work with. You can use both Canon EF and EFS lenses with either of the two cameras. Both are compatible with popular lenses, such as the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 and the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens. You can also choose from a variety of third-party lenses to add to your collection. So, what about storage? Does either of these cameras have a dual SD card slot? Unfortunately, neither camera does, as this is considered more of a high-end feature. Having a dual SD card slot allows you to back up your photos in real time, even if one of the cards fails, by saving a copy of each photo to both cards. This feature is especially useful for professional work, where the consequences of losing any data can be tremendous. Although it is rare for an SD card to fail, having multiple SD cards that you can rotate through would further reduce the risk of failures. Furthermore, it is possible to avoid utilizing the backup function and instead use the two cards separately, doubling your storage capacity. On a different topic, how are they in terms of connectivity? The T5 doesn't have Wi-Fi, but the 250D does. The same thing applies to Bluetooth. The 250D has it, while the T5 does not. Next up, are they particularly heavy? The 250D has a size of 122.4 by 92.6 by 69.8 mm, which is equivalent to 4.82 by 3.65 by 2.75 inches. It weighs approximately 450 grams or 15.87 ounces. Comparatively, the T5 measures 129.6 by 99.7 by 77.9 mm, which is equivalent to 5.1 by 3.93 by 3.07 inches. Its weight is around 480 grams or 16.93 ounces. Due to their physical dimensions, they are both easily portable and compact. However, the size can vary depending on your lenses. I've reviewed quite a few lenses on my channel. You can find links down below or click the card in the top right corner. In terms of build, the 250D boasts a superior build quality to the T5 due to it being constructed with a combination of aluminium alloy and polycarbonate resin reinforced with glass fiber. On the other hand, the build of the T5 is made up of carbon fiber, glass fiber, and polycarbonate resin. Cool, so what about displays? Both of these cameras come with decent screens on the back that work well enough to navigate menus and view photos. The 250D has an articulated screen that can be turned around to protect it from scratches while being carried in your bag, making it a great choice for vloggers. However, the T5 has a fixed screen that cannot be adjusted or moved. Expanding on that, these cameras are rather versatile. What should I expect when it comes to battery life? The LPE17 battery of the 250D camera allows for roughly 1,000 shots, whereas the LPE10 battery of the T5 camera grants around 500 photographs. However, several factors can influence battery efficiency, including the frequency of screen usage, battery age, and air temperature. You should bring a couple of spare batteries with you, especially when working with a team in case of an emergency. By the way, if this video is providing value to you, don't forget to leave a like. Additionally, if you'd like to buy any of the items mentioned in this review, you can find affiliate links down below in the description or in the pinned comment. Okay, so how good are the 250D and T5 when it comes to actually taking photos? The photos would look different based on the lens used. However, we will only focus on how the camera contributes. So let's begin with the sensors. The APS-C sensor size for both cameras measures 22.3 by 14.9 millimeters. The 250D has a 24.1 megapixel sensor, while the T5 has an 18 megapixel sensor. 
the 250D and T5 differ in their processors. The 250D contains the digit 8, whereas the T5 has the digit 4. You may be wondering what this implies. To clarify, let's discuss the advancements the Digic 4 and 8 brought to Canon cameras. In regards to the fourth Digic generation, faster image processing was incorporated, surpassing previous models. Additionally, noise reduction in high ISO images was improved, and H.264 1080p video recording was introduced. The eighth Digic generation saw a variety of enhancements, such as 4K at 30fps, enhanced dual pixel AF, better autofocus, and improved tracking performance. The ISO range for the 250D is 100 to 25,600, which can be expanded up to 51,200. The T5, on the other hand, can handle 100 to 6,400 and can be stretched up to 12,800. Keeping ISO on the lower end is recommended to avoid noise in your photos. Moving on to autofocus capabilities, both cameras offer a maximum of 9 autofocus points. So, do they have dual pixel AF? The 250D does have it, while the T5 does not. The presence of dual pixel AF, in addition to a higher number of autofocus points, usually means significantly better autofocusing capability, which is incredibly helpful. On a different note, what about shutter speed? If you want to capture fast-moving subjects, can these cameras do that? Both of these cameras have a maximum shutter speed of 1 4,000th of a second, which is sufficient for most tasks. Right, but what if your aim is to take many photos one after another, like in wildlife or sports photography? So what you're looking for is continuous shooting mode. The 250D can do 5 FPS in this mode, while the T5 can do 3 FPS. In other words, within one second, the 250D captures five photos, while the T5 captures three. This is useful if you're trying to capture very fast motion. Within that second, the more frames you can capture, the higher the probability you will capture the exact photograph you seek. On a similar topic, are they any good for video? The 250D has the ability to shoot at 4K 20fps, and 1080p at 60fps, while the T5 can only shoot 1080p at 30fps and 720p at 60fps. Neither camera has Canon Log, which is found in more expensive cameras and allows for a wider dynamic range. It is important to notice that the Canon 250D, when filming in 4K, applies a 1.7 times crop to the image. This means that you will be significantly more zoomed in when compared to filming in 1080p. On a different note, do either of these cameras stabilize footage? Nope, neither of these cameras has IBIS. Now, most cameras offer digital stabilization, but as a general rule, you should stay away from that. Although the in-body digital IS can be used, it is generally not very effective. Additionally, the stabilization feature is integrated into the video itself, so it cannot be removed. This means it is usually better to shoot shaky footage and stabilize it later in editing software such as Premiere, especially since these features continue to improve. If you desire optical stabilization, you can acquire a lens such as the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens, but verify that it has IS in the name. With that lens, you will receive in-lens stabilization, which is superior to in-camera digital stabilization. Cool, so can you vlog with them? At this point, pretty much any camera can be used for vlogging, but there are a few issues to bear in mind. First off, having a flip screen is ideal, so you can see what you're doing when the camera is turned around. The 250D comes with a flip screen, unlike the T5. This feature makes vlogging easier and protects the screen when the camera is in your bag. Next up, you need to consider the type of sensor your camera has. The 250D and T5 have cropped APS-C sensors, producing more zoomed-in images than full-frame sensors. Due to this, it is better to stick to lenses with shorter focal lengths, keeping in mind the camera's crop factor. Otherwise, handheld vlogging may not work out as many lenses will be too zoomed in. 
The 18-55mm kit lens is a great choice if you want to vlog easily while holding your camera. By zooming it out completely, you can capture a larger area. Additionally, if you choose the kit lens version with IS, this feature will assist in making smoother videos, which is ideal in almost any situation. An alternative option is the Canon 24mm pancake lens, which is also wide enough, although it does not have any IS, so the footage you capture could potentially be more unsteady or shaky. If you're creating content where you can just use a tripod, the recommended lenses will be different. The 18-55mm or 24mm lens do not work well for this case. Instead, you should consider the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 or f1.8 lenses. These lenses can open up wider and allow more light in, resulting in beautiful bokeh, the blurry background everybody loves. However, using them for handheld shooting slash vlogging would not be suitable as they're too zoomed in and they have no IS functionality. If you want to learn more about these lenses, I've reviewed all of them on my channel. You can find a link down below or click the card in the top right corner. Cool, so how long should I expect them to last? Neither of them has weather sealing, so you have to be careful about that. I wouldn't use them in the rain or expose them to the elements in that way. In terms of mechanical failure, both cameras have a rating of approximately 100,000 actuations. Since cameras are mechanical devices, there is a limit to the number of photos they can take. Each picture you take counts towards this limit. If you take 10 pictures daily, 100 photos should last roughly 27 years. It's worth noting that some of the camera's other components may wear out before that time. Additionally, you might need to adjust the calculations if you will purchase a second-hand camera. Before buying the camera, review the listing and confirm the number of photos it has captured so far. Okay, so what can these cameras do? Both of them have a wide range of functionalities and can be used for various photography genres like portrait, street, wedding, product, landscape, events and documentary work. It is important to note that the lens you select is more crucial than the camera for such types of photography. If you aim to take sports and wildlife pictures, there are a few more things to consider than just your lens selection. To capture the best photos, you'll require a faster shutter speed and a high number of frames per second. As previously stated, the 250D can do 5 FPS in continuous mode, while the T5 can do 3 FPS. Additionally, the 250D has a maximum shutter speed of 1 4,000th of a second, the same as the T5. I hope this review has been helpful. If you're curious about the cost of these products in your area, there are affiliate links down below for your convenience. If you'd like to check out more reviews, you can either look down below for relevant links or click the card in the top right corner. Do you have any questions? Feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.